Well, we're off to another story. I felt led to do this a few days ago. I was talking to one of my viewers online and I told her I was going to share the story and I feel like I should share it with you. It's a butterfly story. And I'm going to start this butterfly story by telling you it really is an allegory. Very symbolic. I'll tell the story and then we'll get on with the meaning. Okay. One day, a young lady noticed a cocoon. And when she saw the cocoon, she was amazed. She thought to herself, oh my goodness, I never saw a cocoon in my life before. So she ran inside, she told her family, I found a cocoon of butterflies in it. I could see the wings. So they told her to keep her eye on it and see how it developed. And she's watching this beautiful butterfly. I mean, she's fascinated by it. Of course, I would have been too. And she watches it and for hours and hours and hours, she sees the movement. She sees the butterfly inside starting to wiggle. So she says, oh my goodness, it's gonna break out and take flight and I get to see that. Well, didn't happen quite as quickly as she thought, right? It took some time and some hours and she started getting hungry. It was supper time. It was starting to get dark and she knew she had to go in. So she went inside and she's hoping, oh, please, please, I want to see that butterfly. Don't, don't bust out while I'm gone. The next day comes, okay, no school. So she gets to go and watch the butterfly. And she sees the wings wiggling and she sees more, more progress now. There's a tear. She sees the butterfly actually working its way out of the cocoon. But it's not free yet. Hmm. So as it's working its way out of the cocoon, she's watching with, with anticipation. You know, that bated breath. And she, she's watching this thing and and it's struggling and struggling and struggling. She's getting a little worried because it's been over an hour. And here we've been all night and I guess he had to get some sleep. But it didn't seem to, she just wasn't sure if the butterfly was gonna make it. So you know how we feel when we see something beautiful struggling for life and we wonder if it's gonna die? We wanna help it along, okay. So she's watching this butterfly and her amazement is slowly morphing into worry and fear and dread. And as time goes on, I mean, she's spellbound by it, but at the same time, she's starting to feel like he's not going to make it. He struggled so long. He fought so long. He wriggled and writhed and, and, and did everything stretched and, and flexed and just did everything to fight his way out of this cocoon but it's not coming out and now it, it it's the tear is big he's halfway out but there's still a big part of it of the other wing that has to come free so she does the only thing that she can think to do she wants to have mercy on it okay so she goes to the house she she gets this little small pair of scissors you know that a mother uses to to cut fabric but real small you know where she's doing delicate work and she goes outside and and she gets back to this cocoon and she takes the scissors and she holds it the whole thing in her hand very carefully and she starts to to slightly work it work a tear even bigger so that she could help the butterfly get loose, right? Very sweethearted little girl, compassionate. So having so much pity on this, I mean, the thing was exhausted. You know, I mean, what else could she do? So she's trying to help the butterfly out, right? Okay, and the butterfly is fluttering, shaking, just weak. You could tell he was just, oh, he was sapped. And she finally, is able to get enough of the cocoon piece out of the way so that the other wing can pop free. Well, now she's excited. 
It's still alive. She's excited and she says, okay, you can fly now, you can fly. It doesn't fly. Now she's wondering, well, what's wrong? Did he break his wing coming out of the cocoon? And she's, she's watching it, wondering, well, what's going on? What's going on? Finally, the poor butterfly lays there and dies. Sounds like a very sad story, but it's a real story for us. We go through our lives, we struggle, we battle this weary, war-torn life. We cannot figure out what the heck is going on. Why? Why is this happening to me? How much more does God think I can take? And we start fussing and fuming and we're battling this thing and we're fighting this thing and it's getting on our last nerves and people are getting on our last nerves and we're getting on our last nerves and God's getting on our last nerves and we cannot figure out why the heck do I have to go through this crap? Right? Isn't that the way we think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you, don't you even try it. I've been there, you've been there, just about everybody's been there. Unless they died when they were two years old. Now listen to this. If that young lady had let that butterfly struggle, fight with the last of its being, just give it all it's got, that last ditch effort, she would have been able to watch as the butterfly took flight. The reason the butterfly laid there and died was because it hadn't yet completed the process. And that is what happens with us. We oftentimes don't want to complete the process. So we end up like college students having to take the course over again. Wasting energy, wasting money, wasting efforts, wasting time. We have to take it over again. Because we fail to finish the process. Or we bailed out too soon. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. So case in point, when you're going through a struggle and it looks like God is hands off and it's on you now, he's not abandoning you. He wants you to take flight. Remember that. He doesn't want you to, 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 grovel for the rest of your life. He wants you to live the abundant life. He wants you to soar. How are you ever going to soar if you never build up your wings? Think about that. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt me when I went through my foreclosure at my old house. It hurt. But look at where I'm living now. I ain't hurting no more. I'm living on one-fourth what I lived on out there. And my house is about one-seventh of what it was worth out there. I mean, what it cost us. And I'm living like a queen. How can you be poor? Poor as a pauper and live like a queen? Only God can do that. But it hurt every step of the way. And I hated every minute of it. But I went through it because I trusted God. I know God loves me. There is no doubt because he showed me two months after I got saved, back in 1981, he showed me himself that he loved me. And knowing I'm loved like that by a supernatural God out of eternity, and God is love? Trust me. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. And he knows who he's letting it happen to. He knows what you're made of. 
He knows what you can take and he knows what you cannot take. Trust in God. Trust in God. He loves you with an everlasting love. He has not forsaken you. He has not abandoned you. He's not a deadbeat dad. He hasn't run off with another woman. Think about it. His eyes are beholding every move you make. And he knows everything that's going to happen in front of you. He knows every step you're about to take. He even knows the little boo-boos you're going to make. No, I'm not trying to rhyme. It's just coming out that way. God knows who you are more than you do. And he knows the plans he has for you. He has no plans to harm you. He has plans to bless you, to do good, to give you a hope and a bright future. I paraphrased it a little bit. But that's what he has for you. Trust him. He is God. Be still and know that he is God. God bless you.